Hi guys, for today's project we're going to be making color wheel spider webs. We're going to do this by using something called salt painting, which I'll show you how to do in just a second. To do this we'll need paper, salt, a paintbrush, a pencil, some liquid glue, and watercolors. I use tube watercolors because that's what I have, but pan watercolors will work just fine. To get started, we're going to draw a circle, um, not quite in the middle of the page, but kind of um, a little bit to the side, and then we're going to draw six lines coming out from the circle. So we're going to start a line at the circle and then draw the line towards the edge of the paper. It's going to look kind of like um, a sun ray a little bit. Once you have those lines drawn, you're going to draw a curved line from each um, sun ray line. So you start from one line, curve it a little bit like a half circle, to the next line and then then where that line you drew ends at the at one of the sunray lines we'll continue it on draw another curved line to the next section of the sunray you'll keep doing that um, up um, for each section I usually do about four or five lines per little sunray section Once you're done drawing all your spider web lines, um, you're just going to fill in that circle that we drew that's, you know, not quite in the middle, but kind of off to the side. We're just going to fill that whole thing in, and then we're going to go over all of the lines that we drew. It shouldn't be too hard because we did most of the work um, with, with the pencil, so you just follow that little guideline that you created.
after you cover all of your lines with the glue, while it's still wet, you want to take your salt and cover all the glue that you did in salt. I like to put some in my hand and then pinch some and just like sprinkle it on. I think it's easier because it doesn't make quite as much of a mess and um, it uses less salt so you don't run out. Now make sure it's all evenly covered and every section is covered as well because it's really important for when we start painting it. Now you will have some extra salt on your paper and sometimes it's nice to use the extra salt to kind of cover all the extra spots that you didn't reach so you kind of just uh, move the salt kind of around your paper like, like tilting it a little bit and then you can dump all the extra onto the table and um, like you can see just cover up the spots that um, weren't really covered and then um, you can just throw away the extra. all covered in salt. Um, for this next part you'll have to be patient for a little while because you want all the glue to dry so that might take a couple hours and um, yeah then I'll tell you what to do next once it's all dry. Once your spider web is all dry we're going to start using our watercolors. For those who haven't used watercolors before it's not like normal paint. Um, it's water activated, so what you need to do is just uh, wet your paintbrush and um, kind of spread it around on your uh, watercolor palette, and that should make like a liquid um, with the pigment in it. So um, then you can uh, paint your little spider web. Uh, what you do once you get your um, brush all loaded up with your color. You just want to dab it on top of the salt and it will absorb it. The first color I'm doing is blue and I'm going to dab it in the little circle that we did. Um, make sure that's all blue and then I'm going to put blue on one of the lines that we drew towards the um, edges. I'm going to call those sunray lines because they kind of look like a sunray. If your brush ever needs more color what you do is just dip your brush in the water again, make it wet, and then do a little bit on the your watercolor palette, and then that'll give you some more color. And you just keep going with the blue. And then I'm also doing one little section of the spider web with blue as well. I'm doing it on the top part of above the little sunray line. Next, I'm going to wash out my brush, make sure there's no more blue in it, and then I'm going to wet the 
my brush with the yellow. And then I'm going to do the same thing as I did with the blue. I'm going to drop some in the middle. And then I'm going to skip a center line between the blue and color the next one with yellow. So I'm going to have the blue, the one next to it is going to be blank, and then the next line is going to be yellow. And then same as the blue, I'm going to color the section next to it with the lines that um, kind of cross between the sun ray lines, and I'm going to color that yellow. I'm going to repeat the process again. I'm going to clean out my brush, make sure there's no uh, yellow in it, and I'm going to make, um, I'm going to dip my brush into, into the color red. And I'm going to skip one of the sun ray lines again, um, and the next one is going to be red. So yellow, sun ray line, that little section of the yellow, then there's that sun ray line, I'm going to leave that blank. And then the next sun ray line, I'm going to make red. And I'm sorry to sound like a broken record, but on the section next to the red line, just like the blue and the yellow that we did, we're going to color that section in with red. forget to put some red in that middle uh, circle. The reason we're doing this is because a color wheel um, is about mixing colors and if you want to sound fancy it's um, called color theory. So it kind of just shows um, how cool colors can be when you mix them together and I just want to see what kind of colors come out when I mix all three um, primary colors which is blue, yellow, and red. Those are the main colors that make all the colors that we see in the world. So, um, uh, that line between the blue and the yellow, right now I'm putting, um, coloring it all blue with that section between um, the blue and the yellow. And then I'm going to take the yellow and put it on top of that blue we just did. So we're going to leave that first section blue, but the one that we just did, we're going to put yellow on top of it. And I don't know if you could guess what color is going to be mixed, mixed, but it's going to be green. So the blue and the yellow make green. And you can see, start seeing the color will start to come together. Next we're kind of going to do the same thing with that blank section that we left between the yellow and the red. So um, right next to the yellow I'm going to uh, first put down the red color.
after I put down the red, I'm going to wash out my brush and load it up with yellow. And that red section that we just put down, I'm going to put the yellow on top. And can you guess what color is going to be made? It's going to be orange. Now there's a word for all these colors that we're mixing. So if you remember, I said that the blue, yellow, and red are called primary colors. So the colors that we're mixing are not primary, meaning like the first colors. I mean, they're called secondary colors. it's finally time for the last color that we're going to be mixing. So that last blank color, or blank sunray line and section, little section next to it between the red and the blue. Um, we're, I'm going to put down the red on it. Now the last color we have to put down is the blue. So we're going to take some blue with our paint brushes and put it on top of that red that we just did. And this secondary color is going to be purple. Now that you can see all of our primary and secondary colors come together on our color wheels, I hope you get as excited about color theory as I do because it's just so cool because there's so many colors you can make more than just the six colors I'm showing you here and you can kind of see that in that little circle that we did where we put all th three primary colors on I know it's kind of gross looking but um, it kind of shows um, how they interact with each other and kind of makes like this weird muddy brownie almost vomity color, which I'm sorry, it, it does look kind of gross, but um, it just so shows how many possibilities there all are out there, and I hope you really enjoy it as much as I do, and have fun. I can't uh, wait to see what you create.